A member of the Pyro community was inquiring about the use of Roman candles in their show. I had a whole production recorded back in 2019, but I never got around to actually producing it. Since then, I've simplified the process, but don't have the time right now to do a full recreation of everything. So, in lieu of that, here's a quick and dirty rundown of the essentials. Alright, so here I have my 10 bundles of each. I've got the Sparkling Falls and the Staff of Ra. Here are uh, two that I, I am not using this time around. The idea, what we're eventually going to get to here, is we're just going to cover this with some foil and then be able to match it. I'm going to show you how we go about creating the sticky match or the foil or whatever you want to call it. All right, for the most part, these were the only Roman candles that I had quickly on hand in order to uh, do any of this. When you're doing it, you're pretty much going to work with at least maybe six Roman candles if you're, if you're going kind of with these single tube units. Of course, you're going to need to know what the duration of is them, if you care. So you'll shoot one or two or three, or kind of record duration so you have some idea. And then you can just basically take that average and assume that's what the entire bundle is going to fire for. In this particular case, I only had three of each because this was a mixed pack. But let's pretend for the sake of this video that these are all the exact same Roman candle. Ideally, they might already be in bundles, especially if you're buying it from a case, which is what you saw in that first scene there with the uh, sparkling falls. They were already wrapped in their bundle, so it made it easy. But for this particular case, just go ahead and make yourself some rows, and then you're going to put them together as a bundle. One thing that you really want to pay attention to is that you are getting the business end of the Roman candles as flush or as even as possible, because that's going to be fairly critical, I think, in making sure that you get a good seal and ignition of the fuses uh, at just about as much of the same time as possible. On the right side, you can see all three bundles put together as one larger bundle in a 3x3 three three array. Alright, so you might find it's a little bit tricky to kind of get all your fuses to stay clumped up in the middle. One of the things that I do is I just take some thin masking tape and I'll, I'll just put it along the edges to, so it pushes the fuses to the inside. But what do I do if there are bigger bore and there's a gap in the middle? All right, so now we're back to our staff of Ra bundles, and you can see that these have a little bit of a gap in the middle, so trying to get all of these fuses held in the center or in a central location for the match might be a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is just stuff that middle with some tissue paper. As you can see here, now I've got a real nice consolidation of the four fuses, which is going to make it pretty easy to ignite those with my E-Match or MJG igniters or regular fuse. Going back to our current bundle here, obviously you can see that I now have the E-Match placed in there pretty central to the fuses. One of the things that might make a difference for you is just to do a little cross cut on the visco fuse or in this case i just took my fingernail i don't even have that good at fingernails but just kind of mash the ends of the fuse to open it up a little bit more and make it a little bit easier to ignite that black powder core with the e-match one of the neat things about working with pyro is that you're constantly learning even in the course of making these videos we might still come up with something new or a better way of doing it than even when we started doing it one of the ways that I recommend now making what I'll call a black powder patch uh, would be to take some black powder and just put it on a, on a plate and then take your piece of masking tape and then just work it in here. And now you have a nice piece of black powder tape or sticky tape nicely coated and uh, ready to go. Now, you, this isn't going to stick to anything. You're going to have to put some tape across the other sides of it, but uh, it's a lot better than simply pouring the black powder and you know wasting a lot of black powder that way. It'll, you'll be able to be really efficient and economical with your use of it doing it this way. 
And that's pretty much what it looks like. There's the original piece in there. And then I laid one across the top and then one more along the bottom here just to cover it all up and seal it up really good. I have no concerns now that all four fuses um, would, I'm not concerned that they're not all going to ignite at this point. So just do up as many of these as you need to. And there you go. That's your completed sparkling falls bundle. As I mentioned before, if you want to use foil, you can make a foil top. Uh, that will certainly lessen the possibility of embers falling down on top of it and burning through. There are different thicknesses of foil that you can buy. So if you go to Walmart, you can buy a, they have really heavy duty foil that's inexpensive and uh, that works well for keeping embers from burning out. If you're not overly concerned or you're making just a one-off piece, certainly you could just use some masking tape there. All right, so these crosses here, these are the final part of what make up the frontage of the Roman candle bundles. This is basically, and it's pretty easy to see how it's built. There's one screw that goes in right there to hold the crosses. And then your screws on the bottom, two, one, two, to keep those together. Got some holes in the board for uh, being able to put some stakes through there, a rebar. And then this is what the final product looks like with the Staff of Ra and Sparkling Falls on there. I just zip tie it on there. Zip tying, everything is, is very tight. They're not gonna go anywhere. And you just set these up, you know, you can set a whole row of these things across your frontage and you'll get a really nice crossing comet and brocade effect. The Staff of Ra, as I mentioned in that single video, is a 20 second candle. The Sparkling Falls are a 10 second candle. They each have an approximate ignition time of about six seconds. So I'll start them six seconds to when I actually want them to fire. I start this one first, and then I start this one 10 seconds later. That way they finish at pretty close to the same time. Uh, every once in a while, one of them will have an errant or, or last second ball or star that shoots out, but that's pretty much expected. So that's pretty much what it is. Get a nice 45 degree cross angle on these and uh, you'll see them in the show. I'll have six positions set up. On the actual ends, I don't have this guy. Let's say we're on the left side here. This one doesn't go on the end. I just have this one firing inward because there's no point in having this one fire out into your the perimeter either of your audience or whatever your the boundaries are. So I have basically I'll have six six of these set up across the front so you're gonna have five going shooting to the left and you're gonna have five uh, shooting the cross direction on it and it makes a really nice effect and once everything is done I'll show you that effect here in just a second.